Welcome to a bear viewing tour with Lake Clark Resort. I was super excited to be heading out for another tour with them. My dad was our pilot and guide. Before we do anything else, let's just appreciate the sound of this beaver. Man, that noise never gets old. Also a little fun fact, when my grandparents were the ones that were running the bed and breakfast before my parents took it over and turned it into the resort, this was one of the planes that they had, one of the only planes they had as their tour plane. And back then to be able to upgrade planes, we had to sell them. So this plane went down to Florida and we were finally able to buy it back about two years ago. So now it's back in the family, back part of the fleet, which is really cool. Our flight today took us down to Katmai Preserve, which that flight was about 45 minutes from where the resort is. It's always a privilege to be able to sit co-pilot when my dad is flying. We flew over Lake Iliamna, which if you didn't know is the largest freshwater lake in Alaska and also one of the only two places in the world that has freshwater seals. The other place being Lake Baikal in Russia. There's also a legend of a river monster in this lake. That could be a whole different video for a whole different time or you can even look it up. There's plenty of people who've done videos about this too. And no rain. Well, it started raining towards the end, but we'll get to that later. You can even see the terrain just change when we go from the resort where we're just surrounded by mountains to just plains of no trees. That's the one thing that's crazy to me is that really close to the resort, not too far away, that there's no trees. And the mountains turn into rolling hills. This is us coming up for landing. Um, in a little lake. You can see bears in the river. I didn't see it, but the guy sitting behind me saw it. There was a bear, I guess, under us when we were landing and it started running um, the opposite direction, which was kind of cool. My dad is super knowledgeable of the area and of all things landing on water, so I trust him landing in this really tiny lake. Just look at it. He knows exactly what he's doing. It was really cute because there were a couple families of ducks just swimming around the lake, which was kind of cute. Once we landed, we got the plane all tied up, and then it was time to hike to our viewing spot to watch the bears. The walk from where the plane was parked to where we watched the bears was really no, like, no time at all. Probably about five minutes. We weren't the only ones there either. You can see a plane landing there, and there were a couple, probably three or four different groups of people there as well. As we were walking, I saw what looked like a big pile of dirt and I told dad, hey, this looks like a bear that pile of dirt does. And he said, I think it is a bear. And sure enough, it actually oh was goodness, a bear. Funny. Not just a bear, but a mama with her little babies. There were three of them. They're so cute. Can you see the different groups of people in the background? Those people are fishermen and there's bears on all sides of them as well. Oh, oh another oh, three cubs. I think it has three, yeah. Oh my God. So she hangs out at this stretch of river. Putting the bears in potential danger by, if you're in places where um, the bears have to come close to you all the time and you're purposely pushing in and making them kind of desensitized to be close to people. Yeah. Well, we're only, you know, 30 miles away from a village right here. So when that same bear shows up and it doesn't have any fear of people, it ends up getting shot in the village. Because right. you're changing their habits. Yeah, because you're changing their habits. If you couldn't tell, my dad has been around bears his entire life. I used to think growing up that he could read the bear's mind because he would be able to tell us what the bear was going to do before it even did anything, which as I got older, I learned it's just learning their body language and learning how the bears react. Since he's around them a lot in the summertime, he knows what they're going to do. He reads their body language. He knows how their patterns are when they're coming to the stream to fish, the ways that they walk, the trails that they use, which is perfect because he got us up to a perfect spot to be away from the bears from a safe distance and also not get in their way. Every once in a while you'll see them coming down the bank and coming close. If they do that, just everybody gather right here and the bears will be really comfortable just moving right around. Yeah. Oh, is that a cub standing right there, Dad? Oh, yeah. I don't see him. There's another mama. I saw another head pop up too. What I love about bear viewing in the remote location is that you get to see bears in their natural habitat. Brooks Camp is awesome, but to me, it's just extremely touristy. You have the famous Brooks Falls, and park rangers everywhere. You have a gift shop, which is kind of fun to go to, but places like this, you're in the bear's natural habitat. Yes, they're used to people being around. Like, if you didn't notice the groups of people fishing and bear viewing on the other ends of the of the river, they're used to us, so they're used to people being there. 
No but it's just a whole different experience when you're able to do it in the wilderness compared to somewhere that's a little bit more touristy. Another thing at Brooks Camp, you're not allowed to be carrying your food with you when you're on the trail. You just don't want bears to associate you with the smell of food. Well, the thing is out here, there's no regulations for that. You can carry your lunch with you in your backpack. That's exactly what we did. Um, we just be very, very careful not to leave any crumbs, any wrappers out so the bears don't come to the people for food. That's the other thing. Look at these fishermen and the bear just coming up, swimming next to them. The bear's unbothered. Like, the people will move out of the way of the bear. And that's the thing. Sometimes you just have to cut your line if you have a fish to get out of the way of the bear, which that's just how things work around here. Okay, as we're watching the bears, let's talk about the things that we wore while we were out there in case you're coming to visit here so you know what to wear on a trip wow. like this. I went on this tour mid-August, so it was a little bit more cold and summer 2023, it was just a little bit more cold than normal. As you can see, a lot of us are wearing chest waders and hip boots, which are super helpful because you're not gonna be getting wet. Sometimes that ground can get pretty wet. So unless you are wearing like rain gear, rain pants, it's best to bring rain pants with you, honestly, or to wear chest waders if you can bring those with you as well. We have very limited stock here at the resort, but the best is those hip boots too. None of us end up changing into hiking shoes. We wear these all day long and we are totally fine, totally comfortable. I wore a rain jacket and a sweatshirt and I was completely fine. Do you remember the mama bear and cubs that we passed in the very beginning? Well, they were still behind us. So we had to watch out every once in a while to check and just see where they were at. Yes, they are familiar with us. They're not going to come and just, you know, attack us because they saw us come by. They're familiar with people being around. But we just wanted to keep an eye on them, so if they were coming towards us, we were able to get out of the way. Mama Bear was the first one to get up and start grazing, and then the cubs started playing. You can see them here wrestling. It was pretty cute. It wasn't too long until Mama Bear was coming down the hill to the waterfront and looking for salmon to feed the cubs. She ended up chasing another one of the bears that had a fish because I think she just was tired. Maybe she didn't want to fish for her own salmon, but here she is chasing a bear that has a salmon, um, seeing if she can grab the scraps off of that one. She ends up eating a little bit of it for herself and then coming across the river and finds more fish that were left there from a bear not too long ago. And this next part is really cool because you hear her call her cubs. Just listen. That's crazy. Like, she just walked all the way up there to go talk to him. And she huffed at him, so I think that she was either telling him to stay where they are or else to come here. Are they coming? Yeah, they're coming. Uh, that, was the, that was the come here call then. That's cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Up to look at. Yeah. The baby cubs just checking us out. Oh my gosh, it was the cutest thing ever. So we were able to figure out because the bears were coming towards mama that that call meant to come here, which is really cool. I thought that was really awesome way to hear the bears being able to communicate with each other. It was right after lunch that we decided to start making our way towards the plane because we saw some of the clouds starting to come in that looked like rain. We made one stop though along the trail to go look at some bears. Can you see the seagulls just sitting on the side of that hill? Eventually an eagle went there to go hang out with them, but oh my goodness, that's crazy. You can see where the bears are hanging out and where our plane is parked. These bears were grazing on grass and berries. Sa the bears don't just eat the salmon, they also eat the grass and the berries. The lake we landed on was totally fine for landing on a full load, but you can't take off with a full load. You have to do shuttles. So me and one of our clients hopped in the plane to be the first to be shuttled to another remote lake where dad would land, drop us off, and go grab the last two. The lake we went to was just up the river from where we were just at. It was probably a 10 minute flight tops 
but it was absolutely beautiful. We were able to follow the river and you could see salmon in it too. And I think the salmon run was so far behind just because of how cold this summer has been in Alaska. Jared and I got married the end of May of this year and this time last year we were wearing shorts and t-shirts and the snow had barely melted like in 2023 by that time. This is honestly the coolest part of being dropped off there is the flyby that you get from the airplane. Absolutely amazing. The client and I were able to sit there and just talk for a little bit and it honestly felt like no time at all before the beaver was back to pick us up and take us back to the resort which was honestly perfect timing because that's when it started to ra really rain. I highly recommend this type of a bear viewing trip for people who wanna see bears in their natural habitat in Alaska. Lake Lark Resort and their guides are well-trained and know the area, I think better than anyone else. The resort itself in the flight to there is even shorter of a flight than it is to Brooks. If you are interested in booking a tour like this, you can contact us at www.lakeclarkair.com and click tours and lodging. I will also link it down below in my description.